what on earth? Hey, lady, lady. Yeah, thank you. Sometimes it's just good to look yourself square in the eye in the mirror and declare some things, you know, right? Indeed. Uh, all right. I'm going to try to say, stay seated tonight. I know, just go ahead and laugh. Uh, it's good to be in God's house. It's good to look at you guys tonight. And I'm going to echo something that Jake said. And uh, that is, you've made your father smile by being here. Isn't it amazing that we have the ability, that you have the ability to bless God. You know, we have the ability to bless him. We have the ability to bring him joy. We have the ability to make him smile. We have the ability to grieve him. We have the ability to, uh, to hurt him. You know, sometimes I, we might not think in, in those terms. Um, but tonight, being in his house honoring him, humbling yourself, and, and saying, this is more important. This is more important to come and, and sit under the word and, and feed on him. And so you can just picture your father with a great big smile on his face and, and just joy in his heart. Amen? Gosh, he loves us so. I've got a good friend sitting on that second row that, boy, if she says this once a week, she says it 40 times a week. God loves us so much. God loves us so much. God loves us so much. And um, boy, that's good. It's good for us to say that. Oh, God, how you love us. Oh, Jesus, I love you. I love you. You're so good. You're so good. Amen. Amen. So we are just going to jump in the Word uh, tonight, and I believe that, um, that there's going to be light, that there's going to be revelation. I know you believe that too, or you wouldn't be here. Amen? Amen. And uh, actually going to be teaching for a few weeks. Um, the last week or two, we are going to go into Psalms 91. Yeah, uh, I believe that tonight and I believe uh, the next night are some things that, uh, that we want to get in us that by the time we get into Psalms 91 that we're going to just grab it very, very easily. Grab it and, uh, grab it and walk in it. Amen? Amen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, by hearing what God what God has to say. So if we're going to go ahead and turn and uh, let me just, let me encourage you. Uh, I see lots of pens and papers out. I see devices out and uh, we're still that people, right? We're still that people that we're ready to hear and we're ready to take note uh, because God's going to be speaking. He's going to be speaking directly to your heart, directly to my heart. Uh, amen. So we're going to go to uh, Ephesians 1. And uh, we're going to read here. This is a prayer that has been increased in my life. And I would bet it's probably been increased in, in your life as well. Um, I was very, very um, just new wind that had come in uh, regarding these particular scriptures. When uh, Reverend Joseph Morris was uh, talking about Brother Hagen and the summer that he prayed this prayer, how many times? Uh, a bunch, just a bunch. He, Brother Hagen, prayed this prayer a bunch, and then the things that he started walking in in the miraculous, not because of the office he stood in, but because of the light and revelation that came to him. Amen. He's no different than we are. He's no different than we are. So. Let's read Ephesians 1. Oh, that is awesome back there. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, in the deep and intimate knowledge of him, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light 
so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. So he's telling us here, thank you, Lord, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you've given us. And why has he given us uh, his precious Holy Spirit, that, that spirit of wisdom and revelation? Because he wants us to know some things. He wants you to know some things. He wants you to know the hope to which you've been called. Uh, and how rich is his glorious inheritance uh, in the saints, his set-apart ones. So we are his glorious inheritance. You are Christ's glorious inheritance. And it says here, so that we will know how rich we are, his inheritance. You're rich in some things. You're rich in some things. You're rich in the, the wisdom of God. You're rich by the Spirit of God. Uh, amen. Amen. So we need to know these things, and we're not going to know them from here up. It's going to be the Spirit of God that comes in and reveals them to us on the inside. Amen. And then, verse 19, so that we can know and we can understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of His power in and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of, of his mighty strength, and I'll add verse 20 here, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So we see here, he wants us to know and he wants us to understand the immeasurable, the unlimited, the surpassing greatness of his power that is towards those who believe. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Amen. I'm born again. I'm in his family. He's talking about me here. So he wants you to know how great the power is, how great that power is that is for you, that is to you, and that is to be through you. Amen. Amen. Uh, so let's pray. So, Father, we just come to you tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, and we're so grateful for that spirit, the precious Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation to flood the eyes of our heart with light tonight, Lord, so that we can know the hope to which we are called, so that we can know how rich your glorious inheritance is, that is us, who we are, what we have, what we can do. Father, so that we can know and understand the unlimited, surpassing greatness of the power that is to us, that is for us, that is within us, that is through us. Glory to God. Oh, Father, we just thank you for light and revelation tonight as we sit under the ministry of your word. I thank you for answers tonight, Lord. I thank you. That, that as your word is being declared, that by your spirit, you're, you're refreshing, you're, you're, you're uh, uh, blowing again on the embers uh, in our hearts, some that may have grown cold and, and may have died down, but tonight there's an igniting. There's an igniting. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for the, just for the, the precious ministry of your word and your spirit that brings such life to us. We honor you and we just give you glory and everyone said, amen. Um, so tonight we are going to talk about God's word. That is, uh, that's going to be the message tonight. <clears throat> and we're going to look at a whole lot of scriptures. That's right. That is the response, a lot of scriptures. God said uh, that his word, Jesus said that my words are spirit and they are life. If there's anything we want to be hearing, it's words that are life. Amen? Amen. And we can't be hearing it too much. All right. Before we actually get into the crux of the, uh, of the message tonight, I, I just want to, I'm going to echo again something that Jake said about some words that the Lord, you know, we're just in February and it seems like the Lord's already saying so, so very much to us. Yeah. Uh, amen. Uh, and uh, one of them is consecration. One of them is consecration. Um, the first one that we heard I'm not saying these are the only two words. These are two that I'm going to emphasize uh, tonight, okay? 
but um, was renewal of assignment. Renewal of assignment. Oh. And, and with a renewal of assignment, it just makes sense that there's a renewal of consecration. Right? And so consecration, you know, I just wrote this down. It's an act of our own will. It's laying our will down for his. You know, consecration, setting ourselves apart. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing really like coming to the, to the Father in prayer and, and just saying, Lord, I lay my will down. I lay my will down and I want, I want all of you. I want your will. Amen? Amen. And uh, so with that renewal of assignment, uh, just as I prayed a while ago, assignments, I believe this with all of my heart, uh, and there's prayers, there's words going forth, uh, praying into this, that assignments are being breathed upon. Assignments, renewal of assignments, that assignments are being breathed upon. The breath of God blowing on the embers of the gifts and the callings of God that are on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. God never changes his mind and he does not take back what he has already given. Amen. And, and so sometimes, sometimes in our walk with the Lord, we can get weary. Uh, we, we can get weary. We can begin to take on the cares of the world. We can just let go of some of the things that he has put on the inside of our heart. Uh, but I believe this is a huge year of renewal. A huge year of renewal of the gifts and the callings of God that are on the inside of you. Romans eleven twenty nine 29 uh, says, For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. He never withdraws them once they are given, and he does not change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. How many of you are born into the family of God tonight? Amen. So there are equippings, there's gifts, there's graces, there's the call on the inside of your life. And no matter where you are right now, no matter what has happened in your life, <clears throat> excuse me, the call is still there. The call is still there. And thank you, Lord, by his spirit, there is, there's a renewal. Thank you, Lord. There is a renewal, a blowing uh, of those things on the inside of your heart. Bigger than it's ever, ever been before. And walking and seeing things that you've never, ever walked in before. Amen. Now then, if there's any of you out there that, um, that think, well, I don't, I don't really have any gifts. I don't, I, I don't, even, I don't even know what that means. I, I, I'm not even sure that I have anything for the Lord uh, to, uh, uh, to, re, to reignite on the inside of me. Let's look at 1 Peter 4.10. And it says, As each of you has received a gift, a particular spiritual talent, a gracious divine endowment, Employ it for one another as befits good trustees of God's many-sided grace, faithful stewards of the extremely diverse powers and gifts granted to Christians by unmerited favor. Um, the uh, Passion Translation reads, Every believer has received grace gifts, so use them to serve one another as faithful stewards. How many, how many of God's people has received uh, a grace gift? Everyone. Say, that includes me. Amen. So, uh, so if there has been some arguing with the Lord and saying, I just don't know. I just, <clears throat> I, I just don't really have anything. Okay. Then we need to stop and we need to come into agreement with what God says about us. And we need to say, whether we understand it from here up or not, that's not a requirement for believing. We see God's word and we believe with our heart and we're, we're going to say, Lord, I see that you have given me a gift and a grace and a calling on my life and I am to steward that to serve one another. Amen. 
Amen. And so we, we give voice to that, and we say that's exactly what we're going to do. Thank you, for, Father, for the grace. <clears throat> Thank you for the gifts, the call on my life. And, Father, I, I place it in your hands, and I put steps of faith to it, and I am going to serve one another. Amen. I'm going to serve others. I'm going to be a part of the building up and the strengthening of the body. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so with this renewal of, of assignment, another thing that the Lord has, uh, has been speaking to me about, and I believe it's really throughout his body, I've actually heard of other people uh, saying a lot of the same thing, and that is a renewal of the wow factor. A renewal of the wow factor when it comes to hearing God's word. Do you remember when you first heard the good news? Come on, someone, anybody. Can you remember when you first heard the good news that you didn't have to go to hell? Did you, do you remember hearing the good news that God himself lives on the inside of you? Do you remember when you heard the good news that by the stripes that Jesus bore on his back that we are made healed? That we're healed and made whole? Do you remember that? What was your reaction? What, was it wow? Was it wow? You see, we... we um, as God's people, how, would, how do we get to a place? How, how do we even get to a place that those words don't wow us anymore? Where has our attention been? Right? Where's, where has our attention been? Where has our focus been? Have we decided that we've heard it? We're on our way to heaven. So now that good work that God began in the spirit, now... Thank you, Lord. I've got this. I'll just kind of do it my way. You know, I don't think any of us really say that, do we? We don't say that, and yet somehow we start taking uh, the responsibility and, and the care, and we forget the richness of God's word to us. Excuse me. I know. I've told this funny story before, but, you know, you get up, your mouth goes dry, and yet I go to the dentist, and they say my saliva glands are all over the place, just shooting everywhere, you know. Oh, mercy. So, a renewal of the wow factor when it comes to hearing God's word. I remember when I was a teenager <clears throat> and starting to hearing some, started hearing some of the, of the promises of God beyond the truth that, um, that heaven was going to be my home. You know, so grateful, so grateful that I heard that gospel message at an early age. Amen. So grateful. But I do remember when I started hearing that I didn't have to be depressed, that I didn't have to be moody, that my God would supply my needs, that I didn't have to be sick that I didn't have to be in fear. I remember hearing those things. And I mean, if we can throw that, how do you say it, Jeff? Throw that Jeff up. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> this is how we should be when it comes. Just leave it up there for a while. We hear the good news and we're like, yeah. you know, and may. That, that's how we feel, isn't it? Isn't that how you felt? Oh, glory to God, my God. We're, we're in a tight place. I'm not even sure how the bills are going to get paid. God says, but my God will supply all of my needs. <gasps> I mean, amen. I'm not kidding, you guys. I see this. This is a renewal in this body for this year. Amen. It's a renewal of the blowing on, the, on those embers that there is such a respect, a reverential awe, a... a, a <gasps> of God's word. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so there's one other uh, word that, uh, that I just want to mention right here, and we've heard it a couple of times. I am so sorry. Will you throw the Kleenexes at me? <laughs> I, I can catch them. <laughs> oh, he doesn't trust me. Thank you. Sorry. Um, but this word has been, has been uh, brought up a couple of times, and so I, I want to bring it up. And it is murmuring and complaining. Uh, it's, it's been said a couple of times, you know, for us to um, um, just to be aware of murmuring and complaining. And we realize this, that murmuring and complaining is what kept the Israelites out of their promised land. It is. And when we murmur and when we complain, it is a manifestation of unbelief in our lives. It's a manifestation of unbelief. And so when we murmur, when we complain, when we fault find, you know, we need to step back and say, okay, what unbelief am I tolerating in my life that this is coming up and out of me, right? Um, read Numbers 13, Numbers 13 and 14, you know, to read the account of the Israelites uh, and... And, uh, yeah, and it keeping them out of the promised land. And you know what? It's not that God threw a fit and said, I've had it with you suckers, you know, and you're not going in the promised land. God had to allow it because they kept saying over and over and over and over. So they walked in what they said. They walked in what they said. But in, in that account, it tells us that Caleb and Joshua were of a different spirit. We're of a different spirit. This church is of a different spirit. Amen. You and your family are of a different spirit. Glory to God. Philippians 2, let's turn there. Um, I want to read this. Philippians 2. Yep, starting in verse 12. It says, Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent, work out, it says. I'm not with you now, but even more in my absence. This is Paul talking to the church there. Work out your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling. Um, in the King James, yeah, it just says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So that, that doesn't mean that we need to work at our salvation. It doesn't mean we need to do anything to add to our salvation. He's telling us what's on the inside of you, work it out. You've been born again, born into the family of God, born of the Spirit of God. What's inside of here? Now take steps, take faith steps, and work out what's in here to the outside. And we do that with the reverential fear and awe of the Lord in His Word. Humility. Again, it's humility. All right? Um. Verse 13 says, okay, then don't, not in your own strength. It, it, it's not you, you trying to manufacture something. It's not in your own strength. For it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you. He's energizing and creating in you the power and the desire both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Yeah. And then verse 14 says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Or, you know, some say grumble, grumbling, murmuring, fault-finding, complaining. And then verse 15 says that you, excuse me, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Um, so he says that you may be blameless and harmless. Not that you do this to become the sons of God. 
which is the next phrase, but that you do this because you are the sons of God. Amen. And so <clears throat> when we find ourselves, um, you know, murmuring, complaining, fault-finding, whatever it would be, what's happening is, yeah, I'll just spit there. What's happening is that it starts to make our heart crusty. If we keep doing it, and we don't recognize and we don't repent from it, our heart begins to get crusty and hard in places, you know? And then things just start, um, start becoming difficult. When, 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 our heart, when our heart is soft and tender towards the Lord and, and towards his word, and we're sitting under the word, and we just, we, we're receiving it, it's nourishing us, it's bringing light when our heart is crusty because, uh, because of murmuring and complaining or because of any other sin, because it's a sin, murmuring and complaining, right? Yeah. Uh, so if we've done that and our heart becomes crusty, when we hear the word, instead of it working in us, um, rearranging things, empowering us, energizing us, uh, making us more aware of who he, he is than uh, who we are or the things around us. When we hear the word, it's just bouncing off of us. It's just bouncing off of us. I mean, we all know, we've all been there. We know what it's like to have a crusty heart, right? Um, and so complaining, uh, murmuring, fault-finding, uh, we're being affected and influenced by unbelief and a critical spirit and partnering with it when we murmur and we complain. So, um, so we just say, we're aware of that, Lord. This is a word that you've brought to our attention more than once, more than once, and uh, we don't want to take ourselves out of the position of all the good that he's wanting to do for us and through us this year. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so the message tonight, God's word, the wow factor of God's word. If you don't care, put it back up. Oh, such a good visual. The wow factor of God's word. 1 Samuel 2.30, it says, For those who honor me... I will honor, right? Those who honor me, I will honor. Um, Proverbs 4, 20. Let's turn there. And we are really going to, um, again, look at a lot of scripture. And I'm just, I'm going to encourage you right now, before we go any further, you know, those who honor me, I will honor. How do we honor God's word? How do we honor him? How do we honor his presence in our lives? And um, one of the things that <clears throat> he just, you know, spoke to my heart um, a few weeks ago, and we're going to look at more scriptures about this, but we know, you know, God's word and God's word is him, right? Right? This is fellowshipping with God when we're fellowshipping with his word. Amen. And um, so I'm not, this is not a statement of bashing phones or iPads or anything like that. All right? Say she's not bashing it. Not at all. Uh, I'm talking about our heart. And I'm talking about the position of our heart. Because what... I found in myself, and this went on, uh, I don't know, just for a while, and uh, the, the Lord just showed me where my heart actually was, just letting some things slide. So let me just ask you this, um, where, is, where is the device, or what is the device that you talk to, talk on? Phone? What is the device that you check emails on? What is the device that you text someone on? Play games on? Phone. What is the device that you let God speak to you, that you spend time with him? So a lot of times, here's, just, here's my point. I'm not saying don't do that. I use my phone. 
okay? I, I have a, a Bible app on my phone. All I am saying is, as a position of my heart, am I honoring and setting apart God's word to me, or do I just have it lumped in with the thing that I do everything else in life with? The position of my heart, not what I'm using or not using, but the position of my heart of whether I am honoring and and being in awe of his word. Okay? Um, So Proverbs 4 and verse 20, it says, My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. So we see here, God's word, he's, he's instructing us, attend to my words, attend to it, give attention to, because those that find my words, their life, their life to you. And it says here that they're healing and health to our flesh. God's word I went to sleep last night with my, with my um, earphones in, listening to Brother Hagen read for an hour and a half healing scriptures. His words are medicine to our flesh. Amen. Amen. So respect and honor for his word. And, and I want to say this too, a way to attend uh, to his word. And I'm not saying it's the only way, you guys. By far, I'm saying it is a way. Because sometimes when we go about our week, we, um, um, we either forget what was said when we came to church on Sunday and on Wednesday. Um, or we're just not real sure how to spend time with the Lord. In his word. Anybody, anybody ever felt like that? I don't even know where to start. I don't, I don't know. Lord, I, I, I'm just not sure. Yeah, right? All of us. All of us. And so I'm just saying this is a way. All right? When you come to church on Sunday, when you come to church on Wednesday, and you're taking notes, take those notes. Write those scriptures down. Listen for not only what the speaker is saying, but listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Write them down. And then, I mean, there are many times uh, I'm taking notes. Sometimes I'll write the whole scripture out at that time, but most of the time I'll write the reference out. And then during the week I'll go home and then I'll write it out. And so I'm getting my notes out, right? And I'm going over for what the Lord said. I said this uh, several, several, several weeks back. If we would get our notes out of what we have taken the last two, three, four years here, we would never need another devotional. It's, it's the truth. If we would at a, attend to, and, and, and seriously, guys, these are the words that God's planted you in this house. And if he's planted you in this house, he knows what you need to be fed. He knows what you need for you and your family to flourish. So it's not just that we would come to church. It's that we would receive nourishment. And that nourishment isn't just for that day. It's, for, it's, it's forever. But this is a way that we can attend to his word uh, during the week. And okay, so we get our notes out and... And we open it up and we go to the scripture and we read it. And we just say, Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who is my teacher, who reveals and and gives me light and understanding. And when we do that, the words on the page become alive. And we go... And we do that. It's the truth. That's how revelation is. It goes from not understanding to it does. It becomes alive to us. And then, and and so we're we're taking those notes and we're writing them down and we're spending time with the Lord and and we're looking in his word. And then the Holy Spirit, he's just, he's just good like this. Then he'll remind us of, of something else that was said, or he'll bring another scripture up to our remembrance. And Oh, I don't know where that's found, but it said this. So we get out, and this is where Google is good. And we'll go on, and we'll Google Scripture, uh, 
yeah, uh, God provides, you know, just do what we know to do. Scriptures will pop up. Uh, we go to that scripture, and he starts feeding, he starts feeding us and bringing, uh, bringing more light and more light. And it's almost like we get in a rabbit hole or, or something when we're doing that. The Holy Spirit just keeps talking to us. If we are, if, we, if our posture is, I believe, Lord, that you want to speak to me, I am honoring you and I am honoring your word, man, he, he just goes at it. He just, he just goes at it. So that's a way. That's a great way to do, uh, to do a devotion, to be in God's word and uh, let it nourish you. All right. So we're going to look at some scriptures right now. And I have um, 30 minutes and we have 15 so you know at one point I may go into tongues and y'all ask for interpretation okay I'm kidding we, we will we'll pick up where we don't get to but uh, number one and these are scriptures we're just going to look at at 15 scriptures in, in the word that talks about God's word all right all right number one God's word is truth God's word is truth. John 17, 70, 17, 17 says, Thy word is truth. So truth isn't relevant. Truth is not relevant. Truth is truth. God's word is truth. There is no truth outside of God's word. All right? John 8, 32 says, We shall know the truth, and the truth will make us free uh, it says the word when we know the truth the truth does this we don't have to get, try to get free when we know the truth it will make us free <laughs> amen amen the truth god's word will make us free free from what anything that's not of god anything that is less than the life of god Amen. Anything that is con uh, contrary to our life, our existence in him, anything that is contrary to our redemption, anything that is contrary to your divine destiny in him, who he said you were, uh, what he said you could have, what he said you could do. Amen. Amen. His word does that. Because his word is truth. But if we're ignoring or not giving attention to his truth, what will make us free? Nothing. We'll go, we'll go more and more into bondage because we're looking for something to, uh, to mask uh, the pain or the disappointment or trying to make our own way. Right? Amen. All right, so we teach our little ones in the nursery. How many of y'all have ever had a baby in the nursery? I think there's a whole lot more of you than what raised your hand out there. I've been in the nursery. All right, so we teach our little ones in the nursery to love God's word. Amen. Can we throw that um, picture up? Isn't that precious? And I have seen, just leave it up if you don't mind, um, you know, I've seen comments and I've heard comments from, um, uh, you know, from, from our congregation. Oh, that's, that's, so, that's so sweet. Oh, look, that is, that is just so sweet. Now, let me tell you, that's powerful. It's powerful. We're training our children. We put the Bible on their cheek and we say, we love God's word. This is God's word. This is God's word to us. It's not like every other book. It's not a self-help book. This, we don't use that terminology. I'm, I, I'm kind of expanding here. <laughs> uh, but this is God's book. This is God's word. And we love God's word. Amen. And, and so this, uh, you know, this is another declaration that is good for us. That we would say, I love God's word. Lord, I love your word. I love your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I love your word. Amen. Amen. Um, and, you know, we honor God's word. We love his, uh, his word. And why? Because, because his word, the Bible, is a love letter to you. 
It's a love letter to your children from start to finish. It's a love letter from God telling us how much he loves us and what, what he has done for us and what he has made us to be. Amen. Honor and love for God's word will make and keep those babies free from every fear, from every bondage, and from anything that is contrary to eternal life and their redemption. Amen. Amen. Number two, God's word is light. Psalms 119, 130 says, The entrance of your word gives light. Isn't it good to not walk around in the dark? Yeah, yeah, it is. The entrance of your word gives light. Number three, God's word was from the beginning. Let's turn to John, the Gospel of John. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Excuse me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh, verse 3, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Or uh, are we, yeah, we're in Amplified. Verse 3, all things were made and came into existence through him. Now we're talking about the word there. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Uh, the same was in the beginning with God and all things were made and came into existence through him. Who is him? So he's talk, we're still talking about the word here, Right? Still talking about the word. All things were made and came into existence through him, and without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. Uh, and then if we'll jump down to verse 14, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. So God's word was from the beginning, and it said, and the word put on flesh. Jesus and the word are one. God the Father, God the Son, the word, God the Holy Spirit are one. Now, just a side note, where do we come in here? Are you, are you in Christ? Have you been born into the family of God? Then... Our position is the very same as Jesus. One with the Father, we're one with God the Father, we're one with the Word. Amen. God's Word in our mouth is the same as God's Word in His mouth. That's another scripture, but that was good right there. Amen. Amen. Um, God's Word is eternal. God's word is eternal. Matthew 24, 35 in the Passion says, The earth and sky will wear out and fade away before one word uh, I speak loses its power or fails to accomplish its purpose. Uh, I believe in the King James it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. Don't you want to be hooked up with with the alive word or whatever it is that exists throughout all of eternity. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but God says my word will stand forever. We can, we can base our life on God's word. Not just for the here and now, but throughout the ages, throughout all of eternity. <laughs> Glory to God. Psalms 119.89 in the Passion says, Standing firm in the heavens and fastened to eternity is the word of God. The word of God. So I'm hoping that, that through these scriptures that there is, there's a stirring on, on the inside of you of the preciousness of God's word and what he has to say about it. All right? Uh, number five. God doesn't take his word back or change it up on us. Wow, glory to God. Psalms 89, 34 
says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. His word is a sure foundation. Once he says it, he doesn't take it back. It says, he does not alter the word that, that goes out of his lips. If he was once a savior, he's always a savior. If he was once a healer, he's always a healer. Glory to God. If he once provided, if he once was a God of miracles, he's always a God of miracles. He's always a provider. He doesn't change his mind. And so this nonsense that has crept into the church uh, about the, the, the miraculous and the miracles uh, passed away because the apostles passed away. I don't know if any of you guys have heard that or not. I give God much thanks that I never sat in a church that taught that nonsense. Uh, but for, for the miraculous and for, uh, for, for healing to pass away, that means God would have had to have passed away. That means the body of Christ would have to have passed away because as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. Amen. Number six, God's word is alive. Let's turn to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, Hebrews 4. Come on, Mo. I know, and I so appreciate that the words are up there. Uh, gosh, they do an amazing job. There are just so many times that I, um, I want to read from the Word because that's what my Bible looks like. And so when I'm reading in it, it's not just words. It's a whole lot of stuff that he's been speaking to me. And it stirs a whole lot of stuff on the inside of me. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Hebrews 4.12. In the Amplified, it says, For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. Oh, come on now. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. So, y'all said it a while ago, God's word is alive. It's not a self-help book. It's not, you know, how to improve ourselves. The word of God is alive. It goes on the inside of us and it changes and it rearranges and it does <clears throat> what only a creator could do. Amen. Let Put that next picture up, Cobe. Have y'all ever seen this before? Only the word of God can do this. So that, you know, a picture of the Bible uh, God's word, God's word is alive. God, God's word is alive. Aren't you glad that his word is alive to us? You know, when we need comfort, what does that look like? What's comforting her? The word, Jesus. It, jumping right off of those pages... The, 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 the ink on the pages jumping right off the pages and wrapping his arms around us. Only the word of God is alive. Alive and full of power and energizing us and quickening us on the inside. It quickens us. Those things that were, uh, that were uh, injured or dead or hurt, the word of God will come in and quicken and bring life. Amen. Amen. Number seven, God's word is what teaches us, trains us, equips us. Let's turn to 2 Timothy, please. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It says, Every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration, and profitable for instruction, for reproof, conviction of sin, for correction of error, and discipline in obedience and for training in righteousness. So every scripture 
I'm going to read it in the King James. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So God's word is what teaches us. Circumstances don't teach us. Hardships don't teach us. Sickness and disease don't teach us. Nor does God use any of these things to try to teach us something. Now, can we, can we learn something? Well, sure. If we turn to the Lord in any situation, we can learn something. But he uses his word to teach us, to correct us, to train us, to discipline us. All right. Amen. Amen. And so it's just a sick, it's a sick humanistic theology that says God is allowing this sickness on me or giving me this sickness to try to teach me something. That is sick. Would you give your children a disease to teach them something? And why on earth would we think that we love better than the God in whose image we were made? Amen. So if we, don't, if we don't have this truth on the inside of us, then when things that are contrary to the life of God, when things are contrary to the redemption that, that he bought and paid for us, then we will not resist what is coming at us, uh, the tactics or the devices of the enemy. We'll just take it. Well, God must be trying to teach me something. We just read, God's word is what he uses to train us, to correct us, and to discipline us. Amen? We're not led. We're not not led by outside circumstances. God put his spirit on the inside of us, and he leads us from the inside out. I used to hear, we were taught this at one time many years ago, that, you know, well, uh, God, God shuts doors, you know, we'll just, God shut that door and um, we just, it, it just wasn't meant to be because that door shut. Shut doors and open doors do not determine God's will and his plan for our lives. If a door is shut and God told us that what's on the other side of that door is ours, then we by faith knock the door down. We do not say, well, God, this must be God's way. If we don't know that, if we don't know that, you guys, then we, through this word, through him teaching us in his word, how he leads us, how he speaks to us, what his truth is, then we will live uh, just way below <clears throat> what, what God created us to be, which is his body in the earth. Now, do you think, do you think that your existence as the body of Christ should be different than the existence that God himself has right now? What does he tell us to pray? Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. How sick is it to think that, that our head would have this realm of life and glorious existence, not only for ourselves, but what, for what we are to be uh, distributing in the earth right now. Uh, why, why would we think that, that the head would have this different kind of life than what our body has? It, it just it just doesn't make sense, and yet all of all there's just goofy kind of of thinking and theology. And I love what Miranda said uh, uh, last week, right? Last week, uh, no matter what we hear, no matter what teachings we have heard, no matter, go home. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. That, that's, where, that's where the body of Christ has just become weak and anemic. We just throw everything into our mouth that comes our way. And we don't even bother to go to the source. We go and we let God speak to us. Amen. We didn't finish reading that, did we? 
sorry. Every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction, reproof, conviction of sin, for correction of error, and discipline in obedience, for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will, in thought, purpose, and action, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Glory to God. Don't you want to be well-equipped? Amen. And it is through, it's through his word that we are complete, proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. All right. Number eight, God's power. We're going to turn to Hebrews. Hebrews 1. God's power has a word. God's power has a word. says he is the sole expression it's talking about the son of god jesus he is the sole expression of the glory of god the light uh, being the outraying or radiance of this divine and he is the perfect imprint and very image of god's nature upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power god's power that we so desire has a word. God's power is connected to his word. It says the universe is being sustained by the mighty uh, word of his power. Not, Not the power of his word, the mighty word of his power. So we're looking for power, right? Are you? Anybody? You, you want something working in you that's bigger than you? You want something working for you that's bigger than you? God's word, God's power has a word. And if we're not attending to and getting God's word on it, we have no power. We have no power. God's, say, God's power has a word. Amen. Number nine, the world was framed by God's word. Hebrews 11. The world was framed by God's word. Uh, Hebrews 11, 3. By faith we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God so that what we see was not made out of things which are visible. So we know this in Genesis that the, that the world was framed by what? The, worlds were, the world was framed by God's word. And he brought into existence, he brought into the natural realm, it says... Uh, with something that wasn't seen. Everything that is seen was made from something that wasn't seen. He brought out of the spirit realm into the natural realm by his word. He framed the world with his word. So it is of us. And this is uh, the message in a couple of weeks. But so it is uh, as us. We were made in his image, and we frame our world with our words. Amen. We frame our world with his, his, with our words. We frame our children's world. Lord, help me here. We frame our children's world with our words. Yes, amen. Amen. So we want to be declaring and we want to be saying what God says about them. Amen. Listen, if we're not liking what we're walking in and what we're seeing, then we need to take inventory of the words that we've been building with. Amen. The good news is it's not too late. The good news, when light comes, we can make the adjustments. Glory to God. And we can start building truth and life for uh, our lives, for our children's lives to walk in. Glory to God. Yeah. Number 10, God's word brings healing to us. We said that earlier, but Psalms 107.20 says, He sends forth His word 
and heals them and rescues them from the pit and destruction. Do you, do you hear all of the life that is going on with, with, these, uh, with these scriptures? He sends forth his word and heals them. Number 11, God performs his word. God performs his word. Who can tell me where this is found? Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. Um, and I'm just going to jump right down here to verse 12. It says, Then the Lord said to me, talking to Jeremiah, You have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over what? What? To perform it. So God is watching over his word to perform it. He's looking for his word. He's looking for his word to perform. And remember we said a while ago that his word coming out of our mouth is the same as his word coming out of his mouth. Amen. Amen. Um, and this is tied to it. Let's look at uh, Psalms 103.20. But number 12, angels respond to the voice of God's word. Angels respond to the voice of God's word. It says, Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Come on, I need for y'all to be a little more adamant. Hearkening to the voice of his word. His word in our mouth. God's already declared it. Now we are the ones with the authority and the dominion in the earth. And now we are to be the ones that declare his word. You know, you probably heard Joseph Morris say this. We don't want to get to heaven and see our angel on a treadmill. Because he was not put to work while we were here. The Bible tells us that angels are ministering spirits who come and minister for and to the heirs of salvation. Amen. And they hearken to the voice of God's word. So your voice is your address in the spirit realm. If you're not saying God's word, if you're not declaring what God says... Uh, the angels have nothing to work with. And they sure don't know that there, there's things that they would like to get to you. But in order for them to get it to you, in the spirit realm, has to hear your voice. Has to hear your voice. I heard, um, I heard him tell a story about uh, he was on the road in his early days traveling with someone. And he was in the um, hotel room and he said he was actually in the bathtub. Anyway, uh, yeah, but he said he was in the bathtub, and uh, he had gone back there. He was bummed out uh, because he was concerned about finances and taking care of his family, and, and he said that he just he went back to, to, to start to pray and to just, you know, work himself up, you know, in faith and, and uh, you know, believing God to meet their needs. And, <clears throat> and then on a side note, he said, so it's just silly to try to get ourselves worked up in faith. Just believe God. We just believe God. We just believe what he says. You know, um, help me to get back to this place if because I'm going to squirrel this way for a second. Um, but the Bible tells us that, that uh, if we have faith as a grain of mustard seed, that we should say to that mountain, be removed, be plucked up, and be cast into the sea. Y'all remember the verse in Mark 4? If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, listen, listen. And it also tells us that he has given us the measure of faith to every man. You've been born in family. The, the measure of faith is on the inside of you. You've been born again, born of the Spirit of God. Amen. Act on what's in you. Just act on what is on the inside of you. Quit trying to work up and think you have to have this great, great faith. Just act on what you have. Anyone that has faith as a grain of mustard seed can say to this mountain, be removed, be plucked up, and be cast into the sea. Amen. Act on what we know. Act on the word of God. Act like it's true. When he says something, put action to it. 
How do we put action to it? Most of the time it starts with it coming into our mouth. Coming into our mouth and declaring it. Amen. Act on what is on the inside of us. So he said he was he was there and he was he was praying and and you know he just he he was he was carrying this load of, of provision for his family and and working uh, trying to work it up and and complaining and grumbling somewhat and he hears the door open and he's thinking oh my gosh I'm in the bathtub and the door has opened um, anyway and he he sits there the door to the bathroom opens. And there is a huge angel standing there. There's a huge angel. Saw right into the, spirit, uh, into the spirit realm. The discerning of spirits. He saw the activity that was going on in the spirit realm. And the angel just stood there. And he said he knew immediately instead of what he had been doing. That he, he was to get the word in his mouth. And he started saying, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And the angel went like that. Where did he go? He went to get the provision. Glory to God. So his word, God's word in our mouth, he's watching over, uh, over it to perform it. Hallelujah. There's angels that are waiting for God's command in your life, for your children, for this city, for this church. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, it's 814. And we're not through, but we're going to pick up right here next time. Amen? Did you get anything out of this? God's word is rich. It is powerful. The greater one lives on the inside of you. And with the words of your mouth, you will frame the life that you are to walk in. And together as a body of believers, when we are in our place, when we are all this bold, and we are attending to his word, and we are declaring what God says, then then we will fulfill this amazing mission and vision that he has called beyond church uh, to for these last days. You're not here by accident. We're not here just biding our time, you guys, and just waiting for him to blow the trumpet and to come get us. We are on assignment. We are on assignment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pastor, anything? No? All right, let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we just honor you tonight. We worship you. We thank you, Father, for your word. Oh, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your great, great plan that you have for each individual here, for, for their families, Lord, for their children, where there's been discouragement, Lord, where, where there has been hopelessness that, that may have set in. Oh, Father, that the spirit of faith, that the spirit of faith would, would be rising up right now, that a freshness, a freshness of the good news of, of, of your word, who you have called us to be in this earth, Lord. Let it, let it just begin to revitalize, just revitalize on the inside, <clears throat> excuse me, from the inside out. And I thank you, Lord, for it. I see it. I see it and I know it, Lord. I see it and I know it. We are of a different spirit. We are. We believe, Lord. We are who you say we are. You are who you say you are. We have what you say we have. And we can do what you say we can do. And so with a big yes, we say yes to you, Lord. As this body of believers, yes. We can, and yes, we will. We will do all of the will of God. All the way to the finish line, strong, strong. All the way to the finish line, strong in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks. I felt real strong, um, and I was, wasn't going to do it. Then the Lord just grabbed my heart. Um, number 13, she was talking on, talking about just the guy in the tub, right, <laughs> and the angel. And the Lord quickened to my heart this um, Isaiah 54, 17. 
And no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee shall, in, uh, in judgment shall be condemned. And I, I felt like there was, and I know the Lord brought some things to my remembrance, just concerning weapons. Concerning weapons that are brought against you. And the way that they're brought against you and me is in the words. And the way that the enemy wages war is he wages war in the mind. And the Bible says this, and this is if we put put the angels to work for us. Because, you know, a lot of times there's situations that you don't know how to, if you had the answer, how many of you know you would just plug it in, right? You would just push the button. If you just know all you had to do is push the button, you'd push the button. If you could just solve it that way. Well, guess what? You just heard tonight all of these things about what the word is. It's your button. It is, all of these were some buttons, 1 through 13, that you need to be push, pushing. But number 13 was one of those ones that needs to be pushed. And that, that you would send angels. And every, the Bible says, there's no weapon that's formed against me, that shall prosper. There's no weapon. And every tongue, and when he's talking about the weapon, he's talking about these words. Again, how was anything formed? With by nothing, what, what the words. So Satan would love to take, and he'd like to try to take a word and fashion something against you and get that word in your mouth. And in a sense, you would be doing self-inflicting wounds. You'd be, you'd be your own cutter. So I'll tell you this, this is just something I just wanted to do, and I want to do it over this church, and I want to do it together, so I want you to say it with me. And there is no weapon that is formed against me, that's formed against my family, that's formed against my church, that's formed against my business. I said there's no weapon that's formed against me that shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment is condemned. This is my heritage because I'm a child of God. Thank you, Father. And you just put the angels to work and you just remind the devil. Guess what? All authority has been given to you. And so the enemy starts telling you how it's going to be. You say, no, let me tell you how it's going to be. This is how it's going to be. And you might think things are out of your control. That's a lie. That's a lie. All authority has been given to you, so don't tell me it's out of your control. The enemy would love for you just to sit back and just let them work. Amen? That's a great word. Aren't you thankful for the rich words? Come on. Woo! Come on, Mo. Mm. Mama Mo, bringing the house down. <laughs>